this lab demonstration on accessing the lab environment. After completing this lab demo, you will be able to log into an individual ESXi host and to a vCenter server, and you will be able to identify the differences in the user interfaces of these two connections. This lab will help you identify whether you are connected to a standalone ESXi host or to a vCenter server, or to an ESXi host that is managed by a vCenter server. Since we will explore the VMware host client user interface of an ESXi host and the vSphere client user interface of a vCenter server, you should already know what their roles are within a VMware solution. In this lab exercise, you will log into an ESXi host using the VMware host client and get familiar with its user interface. Then we will log into a vCenter server using the vSphere client and explore the differences in its user interface. Knowing the user interfaces is a fundamental skill for managing VMware solutions. It's time to finish the introduction and get started. I'm sure I provided you enough good reasons to watch the following video on accessing the lab environment. Now let's get started. In the first task, we want to log in to a standalone ESXi host using the VMware host client. So we have to open a browser, Firefox in this case, and connect to the ESXi host. The ESXi host that we want to connect to is already saved as a bookmark, so we don't have to type in the URL. We simply open the folder vSphere site A in the bookmarks toolbar and click on our host SA ESXi01. In this lab, we use local authentication, so we log in as root with the password given in the lab guide. When we look at the user interface now, we can see that there is a navigator pane on the left. By default, the host is selected and this gives you a summary view of the ESXi host in the pane on the right. If we want to check or change the configuration of the ESXi host, we have to select the Manage option. And with the Monitor option, we can monitor operation of the ESXi host. Below, we have three more items in the Navigator pane. One is for the virtual machines that exist on the ESXi host, one is for the storage options and one is for the networking configuration of the ESXi host. Note that for each of these items, you can see a counter that indicates how many configured entities the item has. In this case, there are six VMs, just one data store and just one network. We are currently on the summary view of the host. What can we see here? On the top, we have some links to common tasks like adding virtual machine or shutting down or rebooting the ESXi host. Below, we can see information about the software version that is running on the host, the state of the host and its uptime. Note that the state indicates that this is a standalone ESXi host that is not connected to any vCenter server. On the right, we can see information about the CPU, memory and storage capacities and their current utilization. Then we have four groups, hardware, configuration, system information and performance. Let me scroll down a little bit so that we can see everything that is in these groups. Now let's try to locate specific information. For example, if we want to know how many CPUs and how much memory this ESXi host has, then we can find this information right here in the hardware group of the summary view. As we can see, this host has two CPUs and we can also see the type of the CPU. Note that we can expand the CPU item to see even more details. In this case, we have a total of two logical processors, one socket with two cores. 
right below the CPU we can see the memory and we can see that this host has 8 GB of memory. We might be interested in some configuration settings that are not visible in the summary view. For example, let's find out if this host is using NTP or running on a local clock. In this case, we have to go to the Manage option of the ESXi host in the Navigator pane. We can see a few tabs here. On the right, and the NTP settings are under System, Time and Date. Now we can see the current date and time, and we see that the NTP service is not running and no NTP servers are configured. This host is running on its local clock. Now let's obtain some information about the virtual machines that exist on this host. If we are only interested in how many virtual machines are configured on the host, then we can see this information directly in the navigator pane by looking at the counter. If we are interested in more details, for example, what the guest operating system types are, that are used by these virtual machines. Then we have to select virtual machines in the navigator pane. And then we see a list of the virtual machines. And for each virtual machine, we can see more information, including the guest operating system. So in this case, four of our six virtual machines are running Windows 10, 64-bit edition, and two virtual machines are running VMware Photon OS. We are done exploring the host client interface. So all that's left to do is to log out. To log out, we click on our username that is shown on the top right corner of the screen and then choose the logout menu item. In the second task, we want to log into a vCenter server using the vSphere client user interface and explore the main features of this interface. Again, a bookmark for the vCenter server exists. So we open the vSphere Site A folder in the Bookmarks toolbar. And this time we choose the first entry, SA vCSA01, which is the vCenter server that we want to connect to. We log in with the default username administrator at vSphere.local. and the password stated in the lab guide. After login, we are on the home screen. On the left of the home screen, there is a navigator pane and it shows a list of items that we can click to get information about that chosen item. On the right, we first have to select our vCenter server, VCSA01, and then we see information about that vCenter server, such as CPU, memory and storage capacity and utilization. When we click Hosts and Clusters in the Navigator pane, then we see vCenter server. SA VCSA01. When we expand it, we see the list of data centers that are managed by this vCenter server. In our case, there is only one data center called SA Data Center. When we expand it, we see the clusters that are part of the data center. In this lab, there is only one cluster called SA Compute01. When we expand the cluster, we see the members of the cluster. In our case, there are three ESXi hosts, SA ESXi 04, SA ESXi 05, and SA ESXi 06. And there is one virtual machine, Photon 03, in the inventory of the cluster. Now, when we select one of the ESXi hosts, let's select SA ESXi 04, then we see information about this ESXi host. 
including its software version, CPU, network interface cards, number of virtual machines, its state and uptime. The state connected means that the vCenter server can communicate with the host. Note that there are multiple tabs. We are currently viewing the summary tab. The information provided on this tab is similar to the summary view that we saw earlier when connecting to a standalone ESXi host using the host client user interface. Remember that in the host client interface we had two options called monitor and manage and these options were located on the left inside the navigator pane. Here in the vSphere client user interface these two options are called monitor and configure and they are presented as tabs in the right pane and not within the navigator pane. Regardless of such differences, the overall layout of the two user interfaces is quite similar. Both feature a navigator pane on the left and a larger pane on the right that varies depending on the item that you selected in the navigator pane. Of course, the vSphere client user interface offers way more features than the host client. You may wonder why we do not see the ESXi host SA ESXi01 that we accessed earlier here in the inventory of this vCenter server. Remember, that ESXi host is a standalone ESXi host. It has not yet been added to the vCenter server. This wraps up the exploration of the vSphere client user interface. So we are ready to log out. Again, logging out is done by opening the menu at our username and then clicking the logout menu item. We accessed the VMware host client user interface by connecting to a standalone ESXi host. And then we access the VMware vSphere client user interface by connecting to a vCenter server. On the vCenter server, we had a look at one of the managed ESXi hosts, SA ESXi04. You might wonder what happens when you connect to the VMware host client user interface of an ESXi host that is managed by a vCenter server. We can quickly try to see if this works. Let's connect to our ESXi host SA ESXi04. This is an ESXi host that is managed by the vCenter server. I log in with username root. After login, we see that the user interface is the same that we had when connecting to a standalone ESXi server. There are two differences though. One is that when we look at the state, it says connected to vCenter server at and then the IP address of the vCenter server. Remember, on a standalone ESXi host, this says not connected to any vCenter server. The other difference is that there is a message below. It says this host is being managed by vCenter server. Actions may be performed automatically by vCenter server without your knowledge. So yes, you can access the VMware host client user interface on an ESXi host, even when that host is managed by a vCenter server. But of course, you should use the VMware vSphere client in such a situation. Congratulations, you have completed the Accessing the Lab Environment lab demonstration video. In this lab, we logged into an ESXi host using the VMware host client and into a vCenter server using the vSphere client. We got familiar with these two user interfaces and we learned how we can identify whether we are connected to a standalone ESXi host or to a vCenter server or to an ESXi host that is managed by a vCenter server. In the lab exercise, we log in using local usernames. 
please note that in a production environment with multiple administrators, it is more common to use Active Directory integration. Thank you for watching this lab demonstration video. I hope the knowledge acquired here will help you with your daily job assignments and good luck as you continue your journey in VMware world.